This book's up really cool. I know, you really like it. There's all kinds of stuff in here. That's like, you know, it's like, who would have thought? Well, hello there, parapeeps, and welcome to another episode of Our Haunted Travels. Let's talk paranormal live. I'm your host, Sean Donnelly. I'm your co-host, Marianne Donnelly. I can't do them the same all the time. I have to mix them up. I was going to say, I'm your captain. This is my co-pilot. You're sick. Today, <laughs> we are starting something new. We look are? At that, look how thick that book is. we got a book here called The Weird and Unusual Trivia. And I don't know where exactly we got this book. We've had it for Did a few years. Did it magically years. appear? We've had it for a few years. Have we? Mm-hmm. And there, this thing is chock full of some really interesting and unusual facts. That it is. So today we're going to cover some of those. We pulled out a couple of them. Yeah, pulled out a few, and uh, this we some can of use them this are for, just for many, many future live streams. <laughs> yeah, some of them are just weird and unusual. Some of them are paranormal related, uh, but most of them are just weird and unusual. Yeah, yeah. So if you guys like this, we have. Plenty we have, more. We have this lots and from. lots and lots more. All right. So while wow, things are firing up and those notifications are supposedly going out, why don't you guys go ahead and let us know where you're from and chat, and we'll get the ball rolling here. Go ahead and check in and just let us know where you are from. Yeah, there's some really interesting. But we'll you might be asking about today's picture for the thumbnail. I don't think anybody even noticed. <laughs> Today is World Oceans Day. World Oceans it Day. It is World Oceans Day. And so Sean has a nice picture out there for World Oceans Day. He didn't know it was World Oceans Day, but it is. And uh, so he has a nice picture out there. I did that on purpose. Of course you did. The thumbnail. The thumbnail. Um with all kinds of debris that came up off the from the ocean. See how I did that? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, since it's weird and unusual trivia, uh, I'm just going to give you some facts now. Maybe we'll ask them something else later. I don't know. But uh, while we're waiting for everybody to get in, there are 8 million metric tons of plastic, just plastic, that goes into our oceans every year, which is crazy. And that's about... 90 aircraft carriers mass. The weight of 90 aircraft carriers. That's every year. One of those bottles will take 450 years approximately to disintegrate. Decompose. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And some of them even take up to a thousand years. They are making them thinner and thinner now so that they're taking a little bit less time, but crazy. We should make a house out of those. People have uh, made walls and things like that in their homes from them. But last a thousand years. That's right. <sighs> Fill it with insulation, each bottle. It'll be good and tight and sealed. All right, let's talk about our show supporters. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right, you're up. All right, so our show supporters are uh, H A J K Services, B U B Unique, Happy Trails Hiking, Lori Bryant, and the Mark Cole Agency. And how can you become a show or channel supporter? You can become a channel or show supporter by being a five dollar a month or more Patreon supporter. That is right. Yes. That is right. Yes. We will have a little commercial here in a little while for that. Okay. We've changed things. If you guys have been here before, you noticed the Twitter thing. Now that we got five show supporters, we're going to go by that. That's right. Okay. So, so we have right. New Jersey and Tennessee and Portsmouth in the house today. Very cool. Those are some newer areas. Some of them newer than others, but very cool. Are you ready for your next thing? I don't know. Am I? I don't know. Let's see. All right. We are live. So I have to give the disclaimer that we are live. There is no editing. 
So I apologize ahead of time if I make a mistake about something. But Marianne is here to correct me when I'm wrong and that she does very good at doing that. If you are new to our channel, please consider hitting the subscribe button and ringing that little bell so you get notified, hopefully, next time we put out a video. That's right. Um, let's see. How many we got? We got eight. We need a couple more. We'll get a couple more coming in here and we'll uh, get Boris awake to share this out. So while we're doing that, let me explain who we are. Or do you want to do it? Nope. Absolutely all you. Duh. Sean and Marianne Donnelly, owners of PanicD.com and DarkShadowGhostTours.com. PanicD.com is a database of over 800 locations across the United States and territories that have paranormal claims. In November of 2017, we started a series, mainly right here on our YouTube channel and in uh, book form, called Our Haunted Travels, which features... I know it's at 215, and I have another 120, I think to add so i think it's 335 locations that we have personally visited wow it's a lot that's a lot of places it's a lot right. i may know better by the end of this weekend oh, because i be wanted to work hard. on that tonight that's what i plan on tonight tomorrow is adding those locations to at least get a count because i don't know exactly i have a list i know which ones they are but okay yeah, yeah. Right. so each week we feature a new location on our channel and what we do is we cover the history, any ghost stories and folklore, paranormal claims, our personal experiences, and why we believe the locations are haunted. So if you're into that kind of stuff, history, paner paranormal, paner paranormal, <laughs> here we go, <laughs> paranormal, and sometimes we do uh, forensic type videos. If you like that kind of stuff, go ahead, hit that subscribe button. That's right. And... Throughout the show tonight, Marianne's going to be dropping links to our plethora of social media and all that stuff. Do you have that up? No, I don't. But I'll get it up. But she's she's getting it. I'll get it. All right. So let's see if we could get some more here into chat. We lost a couple. But let's see if we can get some more. All right. So Boris, please. Time can to you dance. Help us huh? out. Time to dance. If I could find it. He's been dancing there all is. over Florida, I think. I know. All right, folks, help us out here. See if we could get some more people to the show and in the chat. Boris, would you please? That's copyrighted. I don't know. <laughs> All right. Would you like to do a roll call? Sure. If you would. I would love to. So we have D Zombified. Hello. Gemma's Journey Grace. Uh, Annette Reagan. Riser's Treasure Hunting Emporium. Sleeping Artist. We had Ron A. And. Flora Jungle. Flora Jungle and Sleeping Artist, if I didn't say it. All right. Did you say Gemmas or Gemmas? Did you say it right? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, hello, everybody. Welcome, welcome, welcome. I think it's Gem, like a gem. She's a gem. She's a gem. I think. Oh, well, we'll call her Gemma. Gem. Are you okay with that? We'll call you Gemma because you're a gem. Sleeping Artist ASMR. I tweeted it out. Thank you very much. Riser's Treasure hi, uh, Hunting and Emporium. Any new series upcoming? Uh, series. Uh, not and well, I guess these ones that we have coming out now are kind of like a series because it's all based on what we did last weekend. So Tuesday we did we put out the video about the Bigfoot conference. And then yesterday we put out the video about um, Mount Washington Tavern. Tuesday we're putting out a video about what we did at General 
Braddock's grave. Braddock's grave, a little investigation on National Park Service property. But And then Friday, um, we got a video about Fort Necessity. So actually, those four videos kind of like go together in this series. They'll mm -hmm. probably go into a playlist because it's all the same area. Okay. Um, and then this summer, we quite... We haven't quite nailed it down yet, but uh, we'll let you know when we get closer. <laughs> so far, it's looking our, good. And it'll but, be based on our travels this yeah, summer. Yeah, it'll be based, based on our travels. So there'll yeah. be, uh, yeah. Yeah. So I hope that uh, answers your question. We also Call me had. Jim. Uh, there we go. Yes. Jim. We also Jim. had um, somebody ask uh, if the school year was over for us, and I put, as of 1.30 today, it was over for me. Yeah, that's right. Yes. I finally I have finished. two more work weeks. Two more. Ten days. Yes. And then I am off. I can't wait. Riser uh, thoroughly enjoyed Christmas. the Lincoln Train Series. Lincoln Train Series. Yes. Wake up. I know. I, I'm, I'm, not in, I'm not into it. I'm not into it. Okay. Are you ready for your uh, eBay? Sure. Well, it's not. Well, it's not eBay this well, time. Well, but... I'll play the video since I took so long to make it anyway. I know. I got to start going back on eBay. Now that I'm on vacation, maybe I can do that. No, you don't. We got stuff. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, it is time to corral your children in pits because it is time for Madigan's eBay update. I'm going to have to uh, get back on that now that I'm on vacation. But we did go on a little trip last weekend. You just got something in the mail. Yesterday. I know, but it was, yeah, but it was for biology class. Oh. It wasn't for our That might travels. be a cool video, too, for them. How to, how to suture? Live stream. How to do sutures. How to do you sutures. You guys want to learn how to do sutures? <laughs> Yeah, I bought Never some know stuff when that for my might kids. come in handy. That's true. I did buy. I bought some stuff so that my kids could do it in their bio three class next year. But anyway, uh, so this past weekend we went, of course, to the PA Bigfoot camping adventure, and so Sean got himself a nice T-shirt, and we're going to use that as today's eBay update. Yeah, got uh, me a new T-shirt. Actually, we I got didn't two. Get we, yeah, but. we didn't get anything at the Fort Necessity though. We didn't go in the gift shop. Well, we went through the gift shop. We went, they were closing. Yeah, they went. Yeah, but we didn't. We should have stayed and seen if there was a shirt for you. We don't really need anything. A piece more. of Fort we're Necessity of for me, you know. <laughs> the shelves look full. They are pretty full over there. You but filled them up. We need more shelves yeah. and more room. Yeah. And a bigger house and a bigger studio. That ain't gonna happen no. unless we just start buying more Legos or saving these bottles. <laughs> we can add on to the to the backyard uh, with the plastic bottles that'll last 450 years. Sutures on an orange. Uh, what you said? That's not what I said. But people do practice on oranges. Absolutely. I just I bought my kids a, an actual. Um, well, I'm glad you said suture. orange and you didn't need a human subject. <laughs> I, I bought, don't know what I my bought fake is. human. I bought. Pot, some Here, let fake me show them human, how to fix that. Fake human flesh that they can like practice in, but yes, oranges is uh, oh, is man. quite traditional for that. <laughs> also, oranges are used also for testing um, syringe use and things like that for giving medication. Sleeping artist knows all about it. Well, it's okay. Buy oranges. You don't need to use my arm. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Let's see what else we got, and then Riser says that they think that the Lincoln Train and the Lizzie Borden series are his favorites so far. I think they're my favorites too. We like did, this. man. That Lizzie, man, that seemed Lizzie to went on for good. like a month and a half. It did, but I'm tired it, of hearing about Lizzie, but but Lizzie's cool. It makes the talent and clickbait happy, so. <laughs> What else you got going on there, sweetie pie? No, we're not ready for that. You're not ready for what? That. I don't know what it was, but okay. okay. I don't have anything for in the news. <laughs> Newsletter. Haven't put one out in a couple weeks. What? You're slipping. No, we were traveling, so oh. I haven't had a chance to do that. Okay. So, 
um, go ahead and drop the link to the uh, Para Peeps Insider because one is going to be coming out either is tomorrow. It this? Yeah, the email list. Okay. Tomorrow or Monday. And in there will be a coupon for our store. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. So consider joining our email list. Because notifications don't seem to be working for Panic D for some reason. I get a lot of comments when people say, man, I missed the live stream. I didn't get the notification. Or I just got the notification. It's like two hours after the live stream. Seriously, I don't know what's going on. And I've been watching some live streams. I was watching some earlier where they're saying there's all kinds of glitchy, weird stuff going on with YouTube. So I don't know. But that's why we're building our own email list. And you can follow us on Patreon and do that kind of stuff. Because we're just going to do it ourselves. Instead of relying on YouTube. So you're sending out an email... The well, eventually, up, eventually Friday, I'll send out an email and say, hey, we're live tomorrow, live at 5, here's what the topic is and that kind okay. of thing. But there's like 20 people on there right. right now. So Riser said that he got the uh, half hour warning. Today. Cool. So that's awesome. So maybe the little bell's working today. Maybe. We'll see. The bell's not on vacation today. No? No. Okay. <laughs> All right. What else you got going on, sweetie? Well, uh, we, let's start that, and then we'll we'll do we'll come back to the other thing, and when we take a break from there. Oh, okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. So we'll start. You already did one. Well, you didn't ask him any questions. I didn't but. ask any questions. I just gave him cool information. Okay. I just think it's a lot. That's a lot. But. All right. All right. So how are we gonna do this? Am I gonna ask the questions? Can you uh. read the description. Page maybe, 95. Maybe. I don't know oh, where. I in can't the, read your notes. And I don't know where in the book you had this stuff from. So. <laughs> you can't read that? That is beautiful. All right. You guys ready for some weird trivia and facts? Hi, Farmall Fanatic. Farmall Fanatic, how are you doing? Welcome, welcome, welcome. So basically what we're going to do is we're going to ask you a question, give you some time to answer it and then we might have another question and then we'll read you a little excerpt to kind of explain or sometimes it'll be or one question we're just going to play, up, play it by ear yeah we'll see what happens all right so question number one are you guys ready of course they're ready just say yes and chat if you're ready if you want to take a nap potty break get another beer drink of water we can wait <laughs> I think they're ready to hear some trivia. See, Riser and Gemma. Here we go. They, yes, Carmel, yes, yes, they yes. They all yes, say yes. 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 All right, here we go. I don't know go. why you ask them. Because I want to make sure we're still streaming. Oh, I was going to say, that's why they're here, oh, to hear your trivia. never question the technical aspect. I don't question the talent and clickbait. <laughs> all right. Here we go. <laughs> question number one. What current structure is the only remaining one of the original seven ancient wonders of the world that's a hard one to think about it we need some music trivia music that's non if you don't know just put idk in the chat and then we'll we'll move on um i don't know we need some all right here we go kind you're of you're close you're close. Kind of. Specific. Riser's Treasure Hunter Emporium specific? is close. Yes. What are you looking for? Uh, let's see if I got that. Okay. Um, all right. So the correct answer is the pyramids. The pyramids of. Giza. Giza. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. So here's a follow-up question. What year were the pyramids, were the Great Pyramids, built? Everyone's going, man, these are hard. Why am I watching this? They are. And this one's kind of, I don't know, I don't quite like this one. but. No, nah, they get better. It's a beginning. They get better. <laughs> I've never 
never really been that much into pyramids. I was into mummies, but not necessarily the pyramids they were in or anything like Gemma that. Gemma says, I don't know. This is a hard one. These are kind of just kind of like using questions that kind of like share some facts with you, basically. Yeah. Get this. So they were built 2493. Well, you're close. 2493 B.C. Yeah. Yeah, I can't read that one. Or maybe we should just skip that one. <laughs> now, that's the Great Pyramids. The Great Pyramids of uh, Giza. That's how you said that? Giza. Giza. Mm -hmm. Okay, but there are other pyramids that are actually older Egyptian pyramids. There are some that date back to 2649 B.C., and these still exist. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, here's a bonus question. If anybody can get this one. <laughs> <sighs> Riser wants to know if they were made from plastic bottles. Yes, they were made from plastic bottles <laughs> dropped by the UFO that flew over. All right. That's hilarious. If you could tell us the name of those pyramids and what body they protect. See, these questions are, are too hard to Google but yet too hard to answer unless you're like somebody that was on Jeopardy. What was I thinking? I don't know. I, I don't, don't like know. this question set, but that's okay. <laughs> Tim, Tim says, wow, wow, wiser treasures. Wow. Yeah. Okay. So anyways, these are called the um, step pyramids. Of the Sakura. Sagora protected. And they protect the body of King Dozier. King Dozier. Yeah, Ramses. not Ramses. You would think it would be something like that, but All it right, was let's not see. actually. I'm going to tell you the veil is the one that's going now. No. 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 He's okay. fighting with the computer right now. All right. Yeah, those were hard. Why did we start out with the hard ones? You picked them. You opened the book and you went... Yeah, I did. And we, <laughs> we lost four subscribers. Let's All stop right. it. Page 164. All right. Got it. Here's one. How many countries exist in the world? How many countries exist in the world? Anyone? Bueller? Stop it. That's copyright. Anyone have a guess? How many c countries exist in the world? Do you know? A lot. <laughs> a lot. There's a lot. I actually asked it's more him. more than two and less than 500. I actually asked him uh, to look and see what the uh, copyright date was for this book because that could have some determination of change based on for the answer. And he's like, nah, it, it won't. <laughs> Not based on the Riser's answer. Riser's Treasure Hunting Emporium says a plethora. See, I like that answer. That's a good answer. All right, so here's the correct answer. It depends on who you talk to. Sounds like a lot of those science things. How many steps are there in the scientific method? It oh, it could be three, it could be five, it's, it could be seven, it could okay, be 14. So <laughs> Buzzard 33, which I think is Richard. It is. Hello, hello, hello. Um, it ranges from 192 to 260, depending on who you talk to, because there are no official rule book, or there's no official rule book explaining what it takes to be a country. So some groups of places just say, I'm a country. And yeah. they're like, okay. And it depends on what treaty they follow. Mm -hmm. You had actually had something else uh, that See, you See, that's weird. Mentioned. Isn't that weird? You would think, okay, there's how many countries. But it depends on what treaty and what mm -hmm. whatever. What? Yes. But there was a, a slight, slight uh, legal definition that was created. Um, for this very purpose, let's see, it says, one influential legal definition of a country is spelled out in the Montevideo Convention. On say that the again. Montevideo Convention. I got Montevideo. 
Montevideo, but convention, I couldn't say, uh, <laughs> on the rights and duties of states, a treaty that was signed by the North and South American nations in Montevideo, Uruguay in 1933. In Article 1, it says, The state, as a person of international law, should possess the following qualifications. A. A permanent population. B. A defined territory. C. A government. And D. A capacity to enter into relations with other states. So. But that's based on that treaty. That's based on that treaty. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So. So I, I found that interesting. Yeah. I don't know. What do you guys think? Boring? Boring. <laughs> All right. Page uh, 326. Page 326. All right. Go ahead. All right, you guys ready? What was the original name of Da Vinci's painting, The Mona Lisa? Mm, yes, I actually wrote most of the answer of that stuff down there for you. <laughs> Sleeping artist ASMR. In that case, my house is now its own country. <laughs> <laughs> Permanent population, right? It has a space. <laughs> own government has its own government he's the head of household right and then of course we have you know the ability to enter into some sort of relations with other states so he could you know yeah yeah <laughs> so the next question was what was the original name of da vinci's painting the mona lisa Gemma is saying the miserable lady she doesn't look extremely happy. No. No, she never did. Uh, not quite smiling woman, says Riser's Treasure Hunter. Anybody else with a last thought? Uh, sleeping. I was an art major and should know, but I don't. Oh, wow. And Buzzard says Mona Lisa with two N's instead of just okay. the one. All right, so here's the answer. The answer is a certain Florentine lady yes, that was, was the, the original, original name. name. Okay. Now, the uh, work never went to the person who originally commissioned it. Uh, da Vinci actually kept it himself from 1503 till he died in 1519. Now, it was named Mona Lisa by Giorgio Vasari when he wrote a biography of da Vinci okay and he's the one that named it Mona Lisa mm -hmm. um, he had a theory as to who sat for that painting and he thought it was Madame Lula. Lisa Gerardini del Giocondo a right. 24 year old wife of a wealthy Florentine man right but over the years and I'm going by memory from we just read that before we went live a little bit ago. Mm -hmm. Over the years, historians believe that this uh, Giorgio Vasari was full of beans because they found a lot of his work that wasn't backed by fact and he was making stuff up. So there's all kinds of theories as to who it was and until 2005. Yes, in 2005. What's they finally right figured there? it out. Uh, in 2005, it was ascertained that Vasari's information was accurate. Artman Schletter, a manuscript expert at the University of Heidelberg, discovered a margin quote in a text that was once owned by Agostino Vespucci, a friend and confidant of da Vinci. The note explains that while da Vinci was working on his The Battle of Ancaria, Anghari in the great council hall of the Palazzo Vecchio in Florence, Italy in 1503, he was also working on a pet project, a portrait of Lisa Garandini, the wife of a local merchant, Francesco del Giancondo. Today we call it now the Mona Lisa. Yeah, so they actually know. They found a footnote, basically. Yeah. Some even said that it was like a self-portrait. You know, some said it was his mother. His mother, yeah. yeah. So, but now they have proof that. Now, here's the interesting thing: that book you didn't write down the date. Oh yeah, 1550 was when the biography was written. So Da Vinci didn't even know it as Mona Lisa. He knew it as uh, a, flor a certain a Florentine, certain Florentine lady. lady because he died in 1519. 
So we've always known it Da Vinci's Mona Lisa, but he never called it that. Right. Right. And, and I said when we read that, I wonder how much stuff about Da Vinci is like made up from this guy that mm-hmm. we really don't even know that much about Da Vinci. Right. So. Because a lot of his stuff turned out to not have factual ba- bas- backing and basis. Uh, Riser says, does George Washington and Mona Lisa have the same smile? <laughs> yeah, pretty close. They had I know it was once yeah. stolen in 1911. Yeah. All right, page three. So or, the question is, is the real one the one that's on display now? Don't start conspiracy theories because you'll get me going on those <laughs> and our channel will be shut down. Uh, page 632. 632. All right. I'll plug along to there. 632. We're bouncing around this book. Wow. 632. Got it. Okay. So now we're talking about the Hope Diamond. Oh. I told you this book is just full of just random stuff. It's really cool. I wish I knew where we got it. You sure I didn't buy that this year? I know you didn't buy it this year. I know it's been out there for like two or three years. All right. Okay. So here's the question. How many carats was the original Hope Diamond? And this would be even before it was called the Hope Diamond. Yeah, this was before it was called the Hope Diamond. Mm -hmm. So not the current carat. Which is 45. Does anybody know? Anybody have a guess? Uh, Sleeping Artist says 50. No. No. (laughs) It was actually quite a bit more. Yeah. 76. 45 and a half, says Richard. That would be a current version. Well, originally it was greater than, greater than a Sleeping artist says 100. Well, that's close. It was greater than 112 carats. That is huge. That is huge. That is huge. Uh, It was uh, cut down to 67 and then cut down again to 45. But originally it was greater than 112 carats. Now, I don't know if you guys know about the Hope Diamond and the curse of the Hope Diamond. That's actually kind of really cool. I think most people know that there is a a curse of the Hope Diamond. We've actually seen, I've seen the Hope Diamond. I know, we probably dig around, we probably have pictures of it. We should do, do. we should do a video on the curse of the Hope Diamond. But um, the first reported bad luck (laughs) associated with the Hope Diamond. (laughs) <laughs> Sleeping artists, what on earth did they do with it over at over a hundred? Well, th- they think originally it, it, it came from India and it was an eye of a statue. Okay, and then the this thief basically stole it, and he's the first reported bad luck. He was torn apart by wild dogs. Can you imagine? Yeah. That would not be fun. That's crazy. Okay. There's some pretty uh, influential names that are associated with this as well. I thought we had so some more. Let's stuff. talk about okay. one of them. So who who is the Hope Diamond named after? Does anybody know? Yeah, where's the other one? That's that's a good yeah. point. Was it just Winkin with a big 112 carat? <laughs> we can't afford the other one. <laughs> that was actually a good joke there, sweetie. <laughs> They're all good. You just don't listen to me. <laughs> <laughs> They're all winners in my mind. <laughs> yeah, in your mind. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Who's the Hope Diamond named after? We don't have a year. Do you have a year on I there? don't even know where that's at in here. Uh, page around I, 632. I know, but I, what I'm saying is I don't know where. I can't even find Go back a page. his name. Go back a page. Right here. Okay. 
No. No, that was before the sun. that. Yeah. Eighteen thirty. Okay, so eighteen thirties. It's actually named that. Oh, there we go. Henry Philip Hope. There you go. Yep. Yep. Richard is our our Definitely. knowledgeable man there. Named he after Henry Philip Hope. Yes, he so, purchased the diamond uh, in the 1830s, and it would hence be known as the Hope Diamond. When he died in 1839, he bequeathed the gem to his oldest nephew. Uh, eventually, it ended up with the nephew's grandson, Francis Hope, who uh, was supposedly cursed by the diamond. He was one of the cursed people for the diamond. Yeah. Yeah. All right. You, so, you didn't put the rest on there. Flip it over. Here's how it ended up. Right now it's in the Smithsonian. Mm -hmm. But how it ended up in the Smithsonian was uh, it ended up in the hands of uh, Pierre Cartier. Yes. And he played up on the curse. Like, it's it's believed that he invented the curse so that he could sell the diamond to, what was her name? Uh, Evelyn Walsh McLean. Yeah, because she believed that she could take any medallion jewelry whatever that had a curse on it and it became good luck for her so he played up on that to sell it to her for what was 180,000 180,000 dollars yeah this was back way back when so that's like a lot of money and it, she was cursed from this too and that both kids died her husband was declared insane and put in an asylum and then she eventually died and oh, all kinds of stuff and then they got it through the estate, and it, it ended up in the um, Smithsonian, yes. basically. Uh, wasn't, wasn't she also wearing it when she died or yes. something like that? Yes, she wore it as a necklace. Yeah. $180,000, 47-carat eh, right? Hope Diamond. Yeah. Yeah. All right. How are we doing on time? 37 minutes. Okay, so let's move on to page 633. Okay. Oh, big jump. Yeah. Yeah, see, so we go to the Hope Diamond to this. That's why this book has, like, no yeah. rhyme or reason to it. Yeah. But it's actually really cool. All right, here we go. Next question. Horizon you probably says, choked her. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Next question. What country has the most UFO sightings per capita a year? What country has the most UFO sightings per capita in a year? So do we have to decide if that's really a country first? <laughs> You're funny. I know. I'm hilarious. Uh, riser and Sleeping Artist both say Mexico. Well, Riser says Mexico with a question mark. That's true. So they're guessing Mexico. Mm. So. Okay. Well, the correct answer is Canada. Uh, 1,981 reports in 2012, and 10% of all Canadians claim to have had a UFO encounter. That's a lot of Canadians. Yeah. 10%? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay, now I can't read your notes. What do you want? You just put down dates and then some scribbled words. Well, that's because you were just kind of saying some stuff. You said something like 1967, uh, there was a man in Falcon Lake that was burned Well, they date back to 1950. Right. 1967, yeah, there was a major report. That's when they started in 67. Mm -hmm. In Falcon Lake, a man was burned by a UFO, and then... And then in October of the same year, at Shag Harbor in Nova Scotia... Uh, the Royal Canadian Mounted Police and an Air Canada pilot reported strange lights hovering above the water and then submerging. And then a uh, search of the site revealed an odd yellow foam suggesting something had indeed gone underwater, but they don't know what it was or if it was really a UFO. So interesting. And says since then, increased sightings have been reported every year in Canada. All right, we're done with that page. Ta-da! <laughs> Sleeping Artist ASMR says, what? I know, Canada. Canada. 
I wonder if our Canadian YouTube friends out there have, have had, a UFO? had a UFO sighting. I don't know. I was hoping Pusha would be here. I would ask her. There's a couple of them that are from Canada. So yeah. All right, page six fifty nine. Who said they like the Lincoln stuff? Riser, I believe it was. Have either of us seen a UFO? No. no, I don't think so. I haven't. But there's a guy in our in our town that tries to bring him here all the time. And there's a friend of ours uh, that their son saw one and refuses to talk about it. Yeah. Yeah. Not far from here. Yeah. But see, our problem is, is we live in the city. We could barely see the sky. <laughs> yeah. You know, if we went out, there's only a couple times during the year where we're away, really away from the city where we can actually see the stars. <laughs> you know, it's we like even hard few. to see the stars. No, we see a not, few. not from here we can't because of the city lights. I can see a few stars. A few, but. Yeah, but not. How many like times them. have we gone out and tried to see the ISS? Yeah. You know, and I get notices on my phone when the thing passes over, but. Whiskey. Iris Whiskey, how you doing? Yeah, no, we haven't, but mm -hmm. it, that'd be cool the experience. Yeah. Um. All right. So, who said they liked Lincoln? I think it was Riser. All right. So we got some Lincoln stuff for you. Yes. All right. So I got to watch I don't screw this up. Yes, you do. <laughs> all right. So we did all that stuff on Lincoln. And I think we talked about maybe in the live stream or something. Uh, where they used to hold seances in the White House. Mm -hmm. And the reason why they were doing it, they were trying to contact their son, Willie, who died. Okay. Yeah, he really did it for his wife. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He's like, yes, dear. <laughs> now, they, they never did, but they did contact somebody. Do you know who they were able to contact during the or seance? Or they think they were able to contact. Yeah, they think they were able to. But there were other witnesses. It's a very uh, famous person. Anybody have a guess? No guesses so far. Jefferson. Jefferson. Jackson. Can we give him a hint? Sure. It's not a president. It's not a president. Or head of state. And everyone's probably heard of the name. It's not a president or head of state, and everybody's heard the name. Mm -hmm. That's more of a riddle than it is a clue. <laughs> riddle me this. Richard thought it might have been Washington, but now I bet you once he hears our hint, he would change his mind. Uh, Hamilton. Nope. Patrick Henry? Nope. These are all good guesses, though. They are. The correct answer is Daniel Webster, the author of the Webster Dictionary. That's Daniel right. Daniel Webster. Yeah. Boy, that would be a long conversation. I bet you he's pretty I bet talkative. You, I bet you it was some really cool words, too. Yeah. yeah. We were at the Daniel Webster house... Uh, it was moved to what village? Greenfield. Greenfield Village up in Michigan, the mm -hmm. Daniel Webster house. And we have what we believe it could have been some paranormal activity in there. Um, Mary, <laughs> we're walking around the whole time. Marianne's taking <laughs> pictures. As soon as she walked inside that house, we had battery drain completely. Yeah. And then it came back. And it was on multiple cameras. Too. Yeah. And then it came back once we got past the house. Really yeah. kind of strange stuff. Yeah. But yeah. Charlie is here. Hello, Charlie. Uh, sleeping artist says, I never would have guessed that. <laughs> yeah, that's a weird one. Yeah. See, I told you it's weird trivia and facts. So think weird stuff. Okay. Yes. So here we go. Here's the next one. What president's family also held a seance in the White House and believe they actually did contact Willie Lincoln? Kent Country Paranormal, hello. How are you tonight? Welcome. Roosevelt? Nope. Jim. 
Chester Arthur. Nope. Grover Cleveland. Nope. Kennedy. Nope. Nope. What's funny is nobody's guessing the one that I guessed. What'd you guess? I was wrong, but What'd I guessed guess? I guessed Nancy Reagan. Well, they just said Reagan. Oh, I didn't. It. Oh, that's not not until after. Oh, okay. Okay. Jimmy after Carter. Said, okay, Jimmy Carter. We are doing great. Mary Ann's doing even better because she's that's off right. for the summer. I'm officially got, on vacation. I got two more weeks before I'm paroled, but uh, she's just going to bring me food and a cake with a file in it. <laughs> All right, so the answer is President Ulysses S. Grant, his family. Okay. And that's kind of interesting, but kind of almost expected. Because um, they would have known him. Because Grants were people that knew the Lincolns, and, you know, that's kind of... Andrew Kitchens, how are you doing? How are you doing? Hello. All right, so we're going to take just a short break. We're going to play you something here. When you see AJK Consulting Services, that's Andrew Kitchen. So when you guys watch this, please do me a favor Hello, and Mina. tell him thank you for supporting our channel. And if you guys want to be a channel supporter, watch this. You'll find out how. To all of our supporters, we appreciate it oh so much. Absolutely. It helps us keep on keeping on. All right, so this next one, I'm going to try. I can't read that. My eyes are already blurry. All right, so uh, let's see here. Also, another question about the ghosts of the White House or something happening at the White House. Who was it that said, there is something about the house at night? That you just feel like you're summoning up the spirits of all of the people who have lived there and worked there and walked through the halls there. Plus, with the help of a medium, reportedly established contact with Eleanor Roosevelt and Gandhi. Anybody know who said that? And have a great evening, Riser. Thanks for stopping in. Any guesses? Let's see if I can read it out. There is something about the house at night that you just feel like you are summoning up the spirits of all the people who have lived there and worked there and walked through the halls there. Plus, with the help of a medium, reportedly established contact with Eleanor Roosevelt and Gandhi. You did read it very well. Who said that? We got Bush. How many of the first five presidents died on July 4th? Two. Mm -hmm. Two. Three hours apart. <laughs> Am I right, Irish Whiskey? Do you need their names? <laughs> All right, so the only person that said anything was 
Richard, and he said Bush. The correct so. answer is Hillary Clinton. Yeah. Hillary Clinton said that. Mm-hmm. Three. Oh, who's the third who's one? Who's the third one? I know Jefferson and Adams. Who was the third one? Jefferson and Adams the, died same day, same year, three mm-hmm. hours apart. Mm-hmm. I would have thought Nancy, too. So I'm looking for... Number one, two, and five. So Jefferson, Adams, oh my God, who was the fifth president? Well, one... Washington. One is Washington. So he's saying Washington died on the fourth Number one. Oh, did George Washington die on the fourth? I didn't remember that. I don't know. I don't know. Two and five. So Jefferson and Adams died... Same day, 50 years after the signing of the uh, declaration, they had a contest. <laughs> according a according to this, uh, George Washington died on December 14th. Huh. No, okay. I'm not sure. <clears throat> okay. All right. Oh, here we go. Page 455. And we're doing good on time. Got nine mm-hmm. more minutes. Okay, 455. Got it. Okay. All right. Unapologetically Gomez. Yes. We're on our show tomorrow at 9.30 our time, I believe. Or 9. Is it 9 or 9.30? I think it's 9.30 our time. 6.30 their time. I think it's 9.30. Yeah. So we'll be posting that kind of stuff out and everything. So we're going to be on their show tomorrow night. Windy City, Steve. Oh, hey, how you doing? Wow, it's been a while. How nice are you to doing? see you. All right, excellent. Okay, number twelve. How much? It, <laughs> this one's kind of sick. I don't know. How much would it cost in the sixteen hundreds to taunt lunatics at a London hospital of Saint Mary? How much did it cost? It was a tourist attraction. You could go to the hospital and of St. Mary these poor and pay people. this fee and taunt the lunatics. What was the fee? What was the fee? Anybody know? 6.30 PST, 9.30 I think EST. Yes. Two shillings. Uh, I'm not sure how much a shilling is that. worth. Let's see. Shilling to... That might be close. Yeah, this is kind of weird that this is a... It's a U.S. currency is the answer. Even though it was in London, why would they have a U.S. Well, currency in London? Well, because they had uh, that was subdivided into farthings. Repeat the question. Okay. Repeat the question. How much would it cost in the 1600s to taunt the lunatics at a London hospital of St. Mary? Yeah, I don't know why it lists. It should list them. Because they had those there, sweetheart. No, they don't. It's right there is what they had. They had a pence. You can see this A bucket of goat milk. Look. (laughs) Oh, okay. I told you. Oh, okay. That was two, three, and five. Two, three, and five. Jefferson Adams. Who's the fifth president? Um... The answer is a penny. So England did have a penny. I told you. Those aren't in order. Yeah, so you could pay a penny and you go and taunt the lunatics. It was a tourist attraction. Yep, Monroe did too. Monroe? 
Well, we knew. I didn't know Monroe died on the on July fourth. I knew it was Jefferson and Adams, and Monroe lived just down the hill. Just yeah, just on the other hill from Jefferson. That's interesting. Mm -hmm. Huh. Thank you, Irish whiskey. Very cool. Now I know. We added. I didn't to know our when Monroe wall. died. <clears throat> okay, so the next question is. Um, do you want to read that so I don't screw it up because I reworded it the way it is in a book? Uh, Flood and Epic just stopped in to say hi. Well, hello, hello, hello. Uh, I might make the stream tomorrow unless I don't have my granddaughter. All, all right. right. Okay, so Country Girl Paranormal, she's going to explain this. What was she? Oh, okay. Perfect. Why would anybody taunt the, the lunatic? So that's a good segue. She's going to explain it. Okay. Are you, what are you gonna explain? Me? Yes. Oh. <laughs> who else would I be talking to? I thought that somebody in the chat. I was reading the chat trying to see who it was that was gonna explain things. Read the paper. Well, there was something that I didn't write. I just put dots because I thought you were going to read the book about it. But what publication in 1859 changed the beliefs of people and showed that insanity was hereditary and instituted humane medical care for the mentally ill? Because before that, it was... Oh, okay. That's what the dot, dot, dot yes. was. So what page is that? I, I, I'm assuming it was the same because you didn't give me a new page number. I'll go back. 455. 455. Okay. Um, here it is. It's right here. And at the same time, I was trying to show Sean so the before this thing publication, that Mia is trying to say. Okay. Before this publication <laughs> came out, that's what we're looking for is the publication. Previously, madness had been seen as demonic possession, loss of a soul, weakness of character, or a feminine trait. But so in they 1859. Believe in the, yeah. They believed before that that you know well think about that you know with the what happened way back then with salem witch trials and all that stuff like that they thought it was demons but no it was just mental health issues country girl paranormal says i would be afraid they'd kill me <laughs> and being that people Us thought too. and being that people thought that they were demonic yeah it's strange that people would actually just simply pay to go and do it yeah so there was a book that came out. Uh, Mia says, people didn't believe the insane were human or deserving of the rights of normal people. That's right. Mm -hmm. uh, Charlie Gordon says, I wouldn't want to taunt me either. <laughs> uh, Richard says, the internet will cause insanity. Does anybody know the title? The publication from 1859 that changed the beliefs of people and showed insanity was hereditary and instituted, instituted humane medical care for the mentally ill. I'll put that over there. Just so you know, we had 13 questions. Looks like nobody must know the answer. Okay, so the answer is Darwin's Origin of the Species. When that and book if you came want the out, whole name, it's okay. What's the whole name? Origin of the Species by Means of Natural Selection. But, okay. you know. And we established earlier that you do not have that book yet. I do not actually own a copy of that book. Shocker. Uh, I, there are digital copies out there that you can get easily on the internet and things like that, but I don't own a physical copy yet no someday i'm going to get an original you know. yeah I'll hold your breath <laughs> we're going to sell the rv to buy um someday i'm going to get an original signed copy well yeah. you know they do ha still have some of his or uh, darwin's uh, original uh specimen that he collected on the hms beagle in some of the museums with his yeah. own handwritten in tags museums on not in the donnelly household true <laughs> all right so what did you guys think did you like this did you like these weird facts stuff 
Or should we I just put the book cool. on the shelf and forget about it? I think it would be cool just to like tell them stuff rather than make them answer questions. But that's Why? just that's me. That's boring. Why? Did you guys like this? Do you cool. like us asking questions or were they about? too hard? I think they were too hard. <coughs> Where is that one? I like it. Richard said, liked it. I wonder where that page was that I have all those Ohio laws. Those were cool. Liked it, liked it, cool. Okay, well then uh, let's do it again. Well, not tonight. <laughs> <laughs> uh, maybe on future live streams we'll do a part two, a part three, part four. Cause this is as this book is just full of stuff. I can even have stuff in here I can make videos on. That is just amazing. I don't know how they wrote this. It's just an eclectic like. Yeah, there's not really any. There's no like, structure. There's yeah. no index. There's no. I mean, every page you flip back and forth to, it's just there, something there totally no different. Place. No, there isn't. Look, num Ooh. mythical creatures, haunted eBay. Haunted eBay. Holy cow. <laughs> Let's see. Well, you're reading it. We're we're on a live stream right oh, now. Could uh, you I was, share? Well, I was just trying to see what I what want I them had to read do. your mind. Yes. <laughs> what did I, what did I read? Sean, get your glasses. <laughs> uh, let's see, um, eBay offers a guide to buying haunted items on its website. Does it really? Apparently so. Uh, and then they list several things one of which was a human soul some people believe that ghosts are restless souls of the deceased perhaps that's why there was so much interest when college student adam Bertle put his soul up for auction in 2001 believe it or not ebay policy dictates that souls fall under the site's no body parts policy so it's traditionally shut it traditionally shuts down such auctions however this one slipped through his ex-girlfriend bid six dollars and 66 cents it appeared that she might win the auction but when the bidding war erupted in the final hour of the sale uh the dust settled with it being sold for four hundred dollars to an anonymous bidder from des moines iowa <laughs> so see you could do a video just on a the haunted <laughs> buying guy for the ebay so this is okay so mia asked what this book was all right, it's called The Book of Weird and Unusual Trivia. And we have no idea where you can get it. Because don't remember where, we, don't we, remember got where it. we got now, it. Now, Mary Ann said that we bought this a while ago. Yeah, it was like two or three years ago at least. I have a funny feeling that this is one of those things that, you know, where I get drugged to a store like a Five Below or something like that, and I have to walk around waiting for somebody to get done shopping. And I look at something, I'm like, huh, I want that. I have a feeling that's where this came from. Um, so I don't know. Let's see. I don't even know who the author is. No, it doesn't literally say it on the front. Does it say it on the inside? Like ours doesn't. Our Christmas one doesn't say on the yes, cover. Not on the front cover. It says it on the inside. Nope. No, just list the publishers. Lewis Weber. Yeah. Publications International. Lincolnwood, Illinois. But we can give you the ISBN number. You can look it up that way. The cover illustrations from Shutterstock. <laughs> the ISBN number uh, in 2013. ISBN 13 978 We'll type it in chat. 1 4 5. Okay. There, she'll put the ISBN number if you want to look it up and see if you can find it. Uh. There's two ISBN numbers, one from 2010, and it, so it was rewritten in 2013. So um, I'm going to put the 2013 one because that's the version we have. 978. She just wants it so that she can look up the answers for the next time you do it. <laughs> I, I don't know if it's in print or if you could find it. Maybe. I don't know. I'm just kidding. I don't really care one way or the other. I know we didn't order it online. No, I definitely didn't purchase it online. No, probably picked it up somewhere. 
I thought, oh, this is cool. There you go. All right, so I put the ISBN number in there for you. Uh, and you can try to look it up that way. All right, guys, that's going to be our time for tonight. That went Already? quick. Yeah, an hour and uh, five minutes. We're over. An hour and five minutes. We've tied you guys up enough for tonight. So uh, what do we got coming up? Tuesday's video is going to be our um, investigation slash walk around of General Braddock's grave. We have a video out there that kind of covers the history of it already, but this one is like a walk around. And then Friday's video is going to be kind of like the same thing of Fort Necessity. And what we found there. Okay. And then uh, tomorrow night we will be live at 9.30 on Unapologetic... Gomez. Unapologetically Gomez site. Thursday night we might have our live stream back here. Depends on how work goes. Um, or Ghost Tech Talk. And then we'll be back Saturday. Maybe not from here. Maybe if it's nice we'll go to the park. What do you think? It was nice today. I know, but I, I already had this set up because it was supposed to rain. Well, we can't take the book with us? I don't know how to do that once I set it up, like how I can connect to that with the phone because this is a different setup. Oh, I see. I need to figure that out. Okay. I get you now. I thought you meant... No, I set it I'm up like, for OBS and it was on strange. our channel already. So if we didn't go live with that, then people wouldn't see that live stream. And then you see what I'm getting at? Gotcha. Gotcha. Okay. Mia says, I collect and read weird things. So, me this too. This is a good book to have for me your collection too, because yeah. that is definitely an interesting book. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Do you have the, uh, I don't know where it's at. It might be buried in my stack over Which there. One? The Celebrity Funerals. Oh. <laughs> that one's a cool book too. It celebrity talks about funerals the, and, and where they are buried. Yeah, interments. Yeah. Celebrity funerals and interments. It's yeah. a thick book, too. Mm -hmm. You have two versions of that. Uh, yeah, keep I have updating a, it. Yeah, I have a short one and a thick one. It's an updated version. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, everybody. Uh, we want to thank too. you very much for coming and playing with us. It's been fun. We look forward to Saturday. Really do. Have a great time. Yeah, I like because we get to talk with you guys. The studio's okay when it's raining and crappy and cold, but I think we need to go do something in the park or something. You've been watching too many of them outdoors, people. No, it's just like going, last week we were live from our thing and we sat on the deck and did it. We had fun. We had fun. Mia. <laughs> Forest waves back. Uh, all right, guys. Thank you very much for uh, joining us. And until next time. <laughs> Thanks for watching. And happy hunting. Let us know if you like this video by hitting that thumbs up. Also, if you'd like to see more videos from us in the future, support our channel by hitting that subscribe button and dinging that bell so you get notified the next time there's a video from Panic D Video. Thanks for watching. Happy hunting.